everyone. Welcome back to learning how to play crib with me, Megan. Um, today we are going to go over different types of hands that you can get. Um, so that's when uh, six cards is dealt to you and then you have to decide which four to keep and two to throw away whether it's in your crib or someone else's crib. Um, and what kind of uh, thoughts and strategy and what amount of luck uh, obviously I don't know exactly the scientific amount um, but uh, what amount of luck can you expect um, when you are uh, dealt different cards so let's get started so we're gonna start off with showing some different example hands um, this hand will be the dealers and this hand will be the opponents, and we're going to try to actually go through a whole round um, with these cards. So, to start off, you both have to pick two cards to throw away into the dealer's crib. So that'll be this person's crib. So this one, you'll notice that there is a run here. So a run constitutes of three consecutive cards, um, or four or five, but you only can keep four cards in your hand. And then... This one right here, you can do twice because there's two different eights. So this would be seven, eight, nine, which would be three points. This is seven, eight, nine, which would be another three points. And then a pair is two points, and that would equal eight points. Any double run will always equal eight points because of this, no matter what the order. However, uh, you could have more points in that as well. Eight is only the minimum. So here, seven and eight make 15 which is two points and this seven and eight makes 15 which is two points so that these cards would make 12 points consecutively so in this case you would throw these two away which you'll notice also equals 15 and is also two points that you're giving to yourself if that was your opponent's crib you would also give them the two points because uh giving them two points um but keeping these ones gives you more points in the end and therefore um, the risk outweighs or the return outweighs the risk um, and if you had kept other cards instead instead of giving them two points then you would have way less points in your hand and it wouldn't make any sense so in this person's case they have a queen a four an ace an ace a three and a ten an ace just equals one um, and in this case, I would keep these four because four and one make five and they do that twice. So that makes 15 twice. And then two is six, not as quite as good hand as the bottom, but they don't know that yet. You could also keep the 10 instead of the queen. I just like keeping the higher cards. Um, you'll typically want to keep the jack and I'll explain that in a second. So you would throw these two cards away, unknowingly giving the other person two more points because of the five in the kitty but that's just the way it goes you wouldn't know that otherwise because you wouldn't know what the other person threw so now that you've both picked your cards you then cut the deck so I'll just push those over to the side so the person that did not deal would cut the deck and then the other person would flip up this card and that would be the top card this is only used during the counting of the hand, which is after the play, also called the show. Um, unless a jack comes up, and that's, uh, I, there is a special word for it, I can't remember it now, but if a jack was turned up, uh, the dealer would automatically get two points from that. That's just the way it goes, I'm not really sure why. So then, uh, the play is about to happen. So the non-dealer person goes first and they would play a card and you're trying to make 15 and uh, 31 or make pairs or make runs during this time so this person would play a 4 because you can't make 15 with a 4 um, so they would play a 4 and then this person would play the 9 because the more higher you get to 15 the less chance that the other person will be able to make 15 because they would need just a two. Um, and then this person would play the 10 so that it's past 15 because if they played the ace and made it 14 the other person could then have an ace and play 15 and not only get two points for the 15 but also get two points for playing an ace on an ace. So now it's 23 
and then this person just so happens to have an 8, and they play their 8 and make a 31, and that's 2 points, because you can't go past 31, and if you hit 31, you get 2 points for that, just like if you hit 15. So that's how you would count 2 points for 31. And then these cards can no longer be used in the play, and then you would go with the remaining cards. So the person who didn't play last would play again, so it would be this person. They play an ace because that's all they have. And this person would play their seven, so that's eight. And then nine, and then uh, 17. And so there's no hit points for pairs or runs or 15s or 31s, but the last person to play then gets an extra point. So it would be the bottom person, which is the dealer. And now that is the play and that is over. So then you flip your cards over, and the person who did not deal gets to count their cards first. And this is because they do not have the advantage of the extra crib, which is over here. Um, and so because they don't have that advantage, they get to count first, and that'll make a difference when you come near the end and you're trying to get to the finish first. Um, and that could make or break the game. So this person ended up getting a four on the top, and so this is where this card comes in. So you get to count this as part of your hand. So they have an ace, a four, and a 10, which is 15. And then they have an ace and this four and a 10 makes 15, that's four points. And then use this ace and a four is six. And this ace and this four is eight points. And then you have this pair, which is 10, and this pair, which is 12. So that's where the luck comes in because you never know what card is gonna come up on the top here and it could give you lots of points, or it could give you no points. So this person, which is green, gets 12 points. So that's, you would count it there. And then down here, we already counted these person's points, and the four doesn't make a difference because it doesn't help with 15s, doesn't make any pairs, and doesn't make any runs. So this person still just has the 12 that I counted out earlier. So then you would take your back peg and count out 12. And that's how you would count those, but then, they get to count this hand. So in here, you'll notice that the um, there is a 15-2, that's how you count 15, so you go 15-2, 15-4, and then 3-4-5 is a run, so 4 plus five, uh, 3 is 7. Now, uh, so you'll count that. Now had this jack been a diamond, it would match the diamond on this card, which would give you one point. So that's called a right jack, because you have the right one. Um, and that's why it's important to keep jacks in your hand, because you could get an extra point depending on what comes up on there. So that's the end of one round, and then the person who didn't deal would deal next. So we're going to do this again, except instead of going through the whole round, I'm just going to pick um, some more cards and show you which ones I would throw. This is a quite a different show of hands um, than the previous one, so it'll be good practice. So we're going to start with the top this time. And in this case, the queen doesn't help with anything. Uh, it can't make any 15s with the cards that are laid, so we're just going to flip it over and that's going to be put in the kitty. And now you can have two options here. It gives you the same amount of points. It just depends on which pair you want to keep. So you could keep the two sixes and the nine. Um, six and nine make 15 twice there, and there's a pair, so that's six. And then you could also keep two threes, a six and a nine. The two threes and the nine would make 15. The six and the nine would make 15. And then you'd also have the two points for the two threes, which is then also um, two points. It really depends. You could keep the two threes for pegging reasons because it's good to have lower cards when you're getting up to the 31. Um, or you could keep the two sixes. Um, I'm going to keep the two threes for the pegging reason. So then this card would then go in the kitty. For the bottom hand, uh, it's quite an interesting hand. So there's three kings. So if you remember from the first video, when you have a pair of, or you have, when you have a triple instead of a pair, or a three of a kind, sorry, not a triple, three of a kind, that's six points right there. But you also have a queen and a jack, which makes a double run, which is eight points, which is more 
than 6. So you would go with the uh, 8 points and throw the other two away in the kitty. Uh, so that's what you do here. And then you would play them out like we did before. Um, whoever got points during pegging would then take them. Um, you would also have cut the deck uh, right after you picked your cards. And so for this one, it's a 9, so that helps the person. Uh, this one more doesn't do anything for this one. However, if a 5 came up, it would have been very good. Um, 5 is typically everybody's best friend. However, you would see that up here it wouldn't have made a difference either. Uh, and so that is another example of which cards that I would pick out of a random assortment of cards. Let's do one more example. This is another dealt out um, that I just dealt uh, and is a bit better because it shows um, kind of like the crappy hands you can get or the not so good ones um, that can come up. So let's start with the bottom one this time. You have a 7 and an 8 which makes 15 and then you have two twos which is a pair but then the 10 and the queen don't really do a whole lot. So you would take those out and you'd keep the four points there and that's all you would have and this would go in the crib. Again, crib and kitty is synonymous. I kind of use them both uh, just to uh, say what is the extra hand for the dealer. And in this case, there isn't really a whole lot. You have a pair of nines, you have an eight, which if you got a seven or a 10 could make a double run. And then you have a queen and a king and an ace. So in this case, I would throw the big cards because they don't really do anything. Um, and you can't really, the only thing that could come up would be a five to give you points or a jack, um, or like the queen and the king to give you a pair. But in this case, if you got a seven or a 10, that would give you six extra points with the runs. And then the ace is always good to keep for pegging reasons. And then if a five came up, you would also have, um, chances of points. And if a six came up, you would not only have the two 15s here, but then the ace and the eight would also make 15s. So that's where the luck comes in. Sometimes you don't get really good cards or really good hands to choose from. Sometimes you just have to hope for the luck of the draw. So let's see what it is. So we cut, we flip, and it's an ace. So not super helpful, but it still gives this person two more points in their hand. Um, and this person doesn't give them any points. So that's just the way it goes. So that is the example of different cards that you can get. Um, there are many different types of combinations. It's hard to let you know what you will get and what you won't. You could get zero in your hand. You could get 29 in your hand. Uh, that is the highest hand you can get. Um, it's hard to say. And where the strategy, that's where the strategy and luck comes in. Honestly, I think it's more luck than strategy. Um, however, I think my grandparents would tell you differently. Um, but I hope that helps you uh, and gives you a bit more of strategy and a bit more help in what you should keep. Uh, if in doubt, you can always ask any of your family members if they're around. Um, if you are a child, your parents will help you. That's how I learned. Um, if they don't, then they'll just keep beating you until you eventually win yourself. Um, I hope you had fun watching and I hope you learned how to play crib. Uh, if you want to learn anything else, please let me know in the comments. Um, and I hope that we can learn something new together in the future. Thanks for listening.